Now I got my signal coming. All right. I'm going to do what I always do. I want to share with you what people say from around the world that are watching us on the Internet. We've got, we stream, we live stream every Wednesday night and Sunday morning, and we've got 3,944 uh, messages as of tonight. And about 2,000 of those are on the Internet, so you can go on there and watch them. And these are people that comment and write us. Some of them say good things. Some of them say crazy things. And uh, here are some emails. Ezekiel writes to us, no address. Dear sir, good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you doing fine, Ezekiel? I trust that you and the church are doing well on the well way. I stumbled upon your videos in 2018. I don't think it was a stumbling. It was an arrangement by God. After I resigned as a pastor in a charismatic church. Wow. Please kindly send me PDF formats of your teachings on faith and predestination. May God continue to strengthen you to make known the whole counsel of God our Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Ezekiel. Thank you, Ezekiel. We love you, brother. Hope you understand I'm not giving men a hard time. Well, I give some men a hard time because they lie about the Word of God. I'm giving the charismatic movement a hard time because it's just not true. And then Jose Rios in New Jersey writes, Dear brother, Lord our God, richly bless you, Brother Jim. I watch your videos on YouTube. My son told me about you. I've been a believer for 23 years. I am very zealous for the Word of God. When I first heard about election and predestination, I became very interested about the subject. It filled me with joy when I heard about it, so I like to spend time searching the Scriptures like John 5:39 said, and I have a question about Matthew 3.11, baptism by fire. Thank you, love all of my brothers in Christ. Thank you, Jose Rios in New Jersey. Well, baptism by fire is the same thing as Holy Spirit baptism. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the truth. When you tell the truth, you take the cover off. Truth is the word aletheia, and it comes from the word lanthano, which means to lie hid. And this is a this is a part of the English language also. When you place the alpha, the first letter of the alphabet, as a negative particle in front of a word, it negates the word. Alanthano is the word truth. It means not to hide anything. Lanthano means to hide or conceal. So truth means not to hide. And when you don't hide the fact that predestination is true, God does not love everybody, Christmas is pagan, they want to put you in a fiery trial, and it's a Holy Spirit baptism. It's a blood baptism. Holy Spirit baptism, blood baptism, and fiery baptism is the same thing. Think it not strange so concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Strange is X-E-N-I-Z-O. Knizzo, and it comes from X-E-N-O-S, which is the word stranger or an occasional guest. The fiery trial is not an occasional guest in the life of the believer. That's what makes us weary and tired and like Christ when he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. When we tell people the truth and they get, they want to crucify us. That don't feel good. And I don't say these things because I'm masochistic and I like for people to torture me. I say them because they're true. Uh, then John in Pennsylvania. Hello, Grace and Truth. I'm messaging, messaging you from a small town in Pennsylvania. Recently, I've stumbled upon your inspiring YouTube channel. 
I agree with a lot of what I've watched you say. I feel like I don't know a lot of your background and how you came to this position. Long, long story. I was raised in a Baptist preacher's home. I heard him I heard him preach, accept Christ, and the Bible says the natural man does not receive, accept the things of the Spirit of God because they're foolishness to him. Heard my father preach sinner's prayer for salvation. I kept praying the prayer, and I didn't know if I was praying it right. Sinners can't pray. An unbeliever, how shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? And I've began to pray when I was about 17. That was 1956. And I began to pray, Lord, there's got to be more than this, than reading four or five verses and shouting and telling stories for 45 minutes. That's what my father did. And uh, I didn't know what to do. But I heard a professor from a seminary spew out a lot of information. Didn't get to study under him, but he inspired me to start studying. It's been a long, long journey. I went in and out of Pentecostal churches across America. As a gospel singer, I was with the Blackwoods. They were the biggest name in gospel music back in the 50s and 60s. And, and the gospel singers didn't really believe God. They were all, most of them Pentecostals and Charismatics. And I got experience with the tongues and with the, uh, it's a false doctrine, and with faith healing, that's a false doctrine. And I really began to study, and over 40 years ago, I really buckled down and began to study the Greek language, and I found out we're being lied to in America and the churches. Uh, that's just a little bit of my story. It would take volumes to write my life and how it all came about. I, what I teach is like the Puritans taught three to four hundred years ago in America. I teach like the Congregationalists. I teach a lot like Spurgeon. I teach a lot like um, he was the most famous Baptist preacher in the 1800s. I teach like uh, Martin Luther. He would turn over his grave if he knew what the Lutherans had done to his name. Uh, he was a predestinationist, believed Luther made the statement in his bondage of the will. He said, he said, free will is a downright lie, and it is. I teach like him, like John Calvin, and so forth. Uh, John just keep writing us. Then Paige writes to us, I have a friend who watches your broadcast. He mentioned he would like to obtain a copy of the book you use as a reference to teach on pagan origins of Christmas. I don't know which book you mean. Maybe you mean the two Babylons. This is one of the best you can get right here. Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop. The two Babylons. There's two Babylons. There's one at the end of time. It's a spiritual, evil spiritual Babylon. There's the literal Babylon. It was destroyed in the Old Testament in Jeremiah 50 and 51. And there's a, another Babylon at the end of time, which I believe we live in it. It's a worldwide system, and we're living here in a Babylonian system. And it was founded on self, let us make us a name. And that will be destroyed at the end of time. The Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop, and I've got other books. I've got one you can order through Christian Book Distributors. Uh, well, not, well, you can order uh, so many of them. You can order one through, um, what's his name in California? I can't think of his name. Oh. Jack Chick. Chick, Jack Chick. He, he's got all kinds of books on He's got this book, and you can order this one from him. Jack Chick Publications. There's other books. You can order one from Christian Book Distributors called, uh, or maybe you get it from Jack Chick. I don't know, uh, but it's uh, it's a book by Stephen Nissenbaum, and it's called. Uh, the harvest of hell in it. Huh? Harvest of hell in it. Yep. 
It's what? Harvest of Hellenism? No, that's not saving this well. It's about uh, Christmas in America uh, in the 1800s. It was just nothing but paganism. I can't think of the name of it. I don't know why. I say these names so much. But anyway, that's this fellow. And uh, I did not find such a book on the book list, which is an excellent tool for your listeners. Would you please email me the title and so forth? Probably uh, the book I can't think of. And then I got some YouTube comments. These are mostly negative. They don't like me. Tish Lee on textual criticism, why the Texas Receptus is older than the West Cotton Hort text. Who is this guy? He always seems he is so angry in his videos. Well, I am. And if you're a believer, you're supposed to be. The Bible says be angry, and it's not inviting you to be angry. The word is orgizomai. It's a command, an imperative mood in the Greek. And that's to be angry at the winds of doctrine that these preachers are preaching. That's dragging the church away from the truth and making them apathetic. That's in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. If you're not angry, there's something wrong with you. You're not paying attention to these preachers. They're lying. Uh, besides that, they all disagree with each other. And I call the ones down that are false doctrine. They don't even like each other. The Catholics preach you've got to eat the body of Jesus to go to heaven. The Baptists preach you've got to accept Christ and pray the sinner's prayer, which you can't do when you're dead in sin. And the Church of Christ say you've got to be dipped in water by a Church of Christ preacher and partake of uh, the physical communion, crackers and grape juice every Sunday in a Church of Christ church or you can't go to heaven. And they don't even believe each other. But if somebody stands up and says, this guy's lying and this guy's lying, so says, you've got a bad attitude. <laughs> You're angry. Oh, I sure am. Brenda Madrigal writes, uh, I pray that you will observe the obedience of the fourth commandment, the remembrance of the biblical Sabbath. The Sabbath is now every day. Sabbath means rest. It doesn't mean seventh. When you rest in all that God is doing and he's doing everything, then you're partaking of the Sabbath. Uh, this other lady, Mary C., commented on meet the man who invented the Greek language. That's the where I'm ripping the Bible apart. I'll read a verse on predestination and I'll say, I don't like that and rip it out and throw it on the side. And everybody thinks I'm tearing my Bible up. But I went out and got a, a cheap, about a $5 Bible and put a bunch of uh, post-it notes in it to look like my Bible, and it was black like my Bible. I'm just ripping this cheap Bible apart. Read a verse. Whom he did for no, he also did predestinate. I don't like that verse. Rip that out and throw it away. <laughs> That's what people do. Wasn't that how preachers rip the word? Huh? Like Wasn't it titled like how preachers rip well, I'll tell you what it was. It's number 1375 is what it is. I can remember that. It's What was the title of that, Mike? I should know I invented the Greek language. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I should know. Predestination is true. I should know I invented the Greek language. The reason I put that on a shirt is because people kept accusing me of making all this up. Well, I say, if I, you're going to accuse me of making up the Greek language, I'm going to take credit for it. <laughs> That's kind of funny, isn't it? Uh, one may love, but not like God loves. He does not always like. A parent who chastises a child does wrong or evil. For example, may dislike the child, but they love them. God loves Satan. Now, <laughs> He's going to cast him to the hell forever, and he loves him. If he loves him, he wrote upon fleshy tables of Satan's heart, whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges. So he's going to chase Satan so he'll become partaker of his holiness, right? No, I don't think so. 
Brian Christensen uh, wrote to us on ask is a legal term, prayer is buying the will of God and believe is death to self. Have I understood the message correct? Faith in God, when you are a disciple, you are a learner. That's what disciple means. You must take up your cross and die to yourself. Faith is understanding God. To be a learner, a disciple, die to self, and let God be your life. You don't let God. He requires it. So faith is death to self. You cannot get anything from God if you do not bow to Him and do His will. You got that exactly right. That's exactly right, except the letting God. You don't let Him do anything. Uh, I may read a couple more of these. Oh, Jack Williams writes. <laughs> This is funny. Uh, writes on the, the Sons of God, Adolf Hitler's version of the giant myth. This guy reads everything but the Bible. I, I don't know what to say about that. You, if you don't read Greek books and culture and customs and idioms and metaphors, you're not going to know what things mean. Uh, Joseph commented on Meet the Man Who've Been to the Greek Language. You don't get to interpret the Bible on your own. The Bible was handed down to you by the Orthodox Catholic Church. You think so, huh? <laughs> Go before God at the judgment, tell him that, and he'll put you in hell. You need to submit to the interpretation of the church. You're trying to be your own pope. Well, I am a pope. Pope means papa. My grandsons call me papa. So, so. It's funny what people say. Y'all don't know how funny you are when I read these things. Uh, Crystal Marie writes, Isn't it convenient how the churches today teach that we should avoid extra biblical re research and references? However, you are unable to correctly understand the Bible without additional knowledge. That's exactly true. This ignorance breeds false doctrine, and I believe I had been purposely done. How convenient that the church has all but forgotten about the old laws of the Jews. Thank you again for putting this teaching together. It really opens up the Bible to true understanding. Thank you, Crystal Marie. That really is encouraging. That'll be enough reading. If I need to read some more, I'll read them later. All right, now... Let me give the announcements. We are on TV all, all over the country. We're losing some of the TV stations. The FCC is changing some of the guidelines on the on the lease access stations, and uh, just the way it is. I tell Dave, don't worry about losing stations. That's the will of God. We're able to go back on some of them. What? We're able to go back on some of them. Oh, are we? Okay. We're able to go back on some of them, Mike said. What was the reason they were taking it off? FCC. Because we're speaking the truth? No. Federal Communications Commission makes their own laws. They just do it. Every once in a while, they're changing the guidelines for the stations, and we slide with them and go with what they say. It has nothing to do with the truth. If there are, if you're in Chicago or in New York, on some of the public access channels, they've got Nazis and they've got uh, black nationalists and they got every kind of every kind of belief in New York. It's crazy. I've had people come here from New York say, "You you can get anything on the TV there. It don't have anything to do with us talking about." Christmas or predestination it has to do with their probably their income. If they don't bring enough money in, they switch everything around and change it. And they're saying that you have to buy an entire channel. One channel would cost us forty thousand dollars a month. <laughs> we can't afford that. In other words, you'll you'll be on that channel twenty four hours a day. And we can't afford it. Can you can you afford that? Forty Forty thousand. <laughs> He's rich. We're gonna do 
I, I keep telling Dave whenever he gets, sometimes he gets a little bit out of shape. If you're out there, Dave, I'm telling on you. He gets a little bit out of shape because they're getting canceled on something. I say, Dave, it's part of God's great orderly arrangement. Let's accept it and keep going. That's all you do. You just It don't matter if you get hit by a truck, crawl out of your car and say, well, let me see what I do now. Oh, there's a motor scooter. I'll go take off on that. <laughs> there's a tricycle. I'll, I keep telling everybody, God has arranged everything, even the bad things in your life. Yep. If we can come to that, boy, that makes life easier, doesn't it? He arranged your heart attack. He arranged yes, my. I've had two heart attacks. He arranged both of them. Yep. I'll tell you what it's done. It's really slowed me down. It's made me quit fighting, especially quit fighting God. Because when you start arguing with what's going on in your life, you're arguing with the sovereign will of a living God. Does anybody ever get upset at your neighbor or what people are doing? <laughs> Well, I got an answer for that. Stop that. <laughs> I just think it's funny. To me, being old, my body's getting old and it's full of pain all the time. And me and Mary go up and down and up and down, but I know it's the will of God, period. End of sentence. And it's making me the person that I'm becoming every day. Huh. Anyway, what was I? So we've got, we've got, uh, we give to the poor. We give every week to the poor and the needy. We've got a lot of needy people here. And what we do is try to help all of them that we can. I wish I could take all the needy people and just, have a big unit out here, a big apartment-like building with eight or ten units in it where I could just put people in there and let them live for free and we'd pay the utilities or whatever because we got enough people to fill up an apartment building that really needs some help. And uh, if anybody out there wants to buy us an apartment building, we'd appreciate it. Okay. And that way we'll have be able to put people where they can live. Some of the people that we give to make four, five hundred dollars a month, and believe it or not, they live on that. How? I don't know. I know what it's like to make very little money because I worked on a job when I was 20, 21, and I made $96 every two weeks. That was in 1960. And believe me, that ain't enough to live on in 1960. I was just starving my way along. But, uh, all right. Well, look at there. There's a Corey coming in, <laughs> and a grandson, and Corey's grandbaby, uh, uh, Tracy's grandbaby. We got to have you here, Corey. All right, if you want to give to the needy, make your check to Grace and Truth and put needy on the bottom of it, and we'll... And we'll make sure that goes to them. Our picnic will be coming up this next year on May the 16th. And that'll be all day long down here. It'll be on Saturday down here at Rockland Recreation Center. So come and join us and bring your covered dish. And uh, I don't mean throw a blanket over your wife. I mean, whatever a covered dish would be, okay. If you can't bring one, just stop and get some Kentucky chicken. Uh, and then we'll have our 
this next year we'll have our uh, chili cookout September the 19th. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Se September the 19th of this next year. So be prepared to come and join us. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, Chris, you want to pray for us down here in front? Dearest Father, thank you for the opportunity to be with the family, to hear the truth, uh, to be encouraged and informed. Thank you for putting us in the narrow way together. Uh, let us continue to grow in our love and encouragement and forbearance towards each other. Uh, thank you for providing us with uh, Pastor Jim as a wonderful teacher that you've ordained to dig and to, to share the truth. And we pray always in Christ's name, amen. Amen. Jim, there's a new book that just came out. It says God's Hand on America. Talking about the, how America became the, the, the country that it is. It just came out two weeks ago. I don't know the author, but it sounds very interesting. It talks a whole lot about... Uh, Israel, that America had to be what it is to make Israel become again. You say always talking about Israel had to be. Well, it and, uh, had to be to have Truman in there to put the pressure on the world. Yeah, it's very interesting. And uh, I, I'm trying to, it's got a lot of sound predestination in it. Like the guy really believes in a lot of, I, I don't know his name, but it's, uh, I'm sure it's to be found on Amazon, but it's called God's Hand on America. I'm sure that it's well, uh, misled a little bit about minute. how America's pretty. Well, well, it is evil. No, it's just saying that it had to become because it, it talks a whole lot about us. I know some people don't think that this is God's country. You know, it's oh. not talking about that. It's saying how uh, this country helped make America. I mean, helped make um, Israel. Oh yeah, that's it's part talking part mostly about Israel becoming. That part's true. I was just wondering if it was trying to make. Thank you. 